A huge advantage in solid modeling is the ability to easily duplicate existing features. As you can see, I've created a model and I've added a hole on the face of the model. Now I'm going to use the pattern tool to duplicate this feature. So I'm going to go to the feature main menu and select the pattern option. To begin, I'm going to use a linear pattern. The linear pattern dialog now appears. The first thing that I need to do is to select which feature I want to pattern on the model. So first I click on the features to pattern field to activate it, and then select the features either from the work area in the model or from the design explorer, as I'll do in this case. So the feature we're picking is displayed in the dialog. And next I need to specify a direction for the pattern to be created in. So I can use an axis or an edge on the model to use it as reference. So I click in the linear path field to activate it, and then I'll select an edge to denote the direction. Then I need to choose the number of copies I want to include in the pattern, and this number is going to include the original feature. So in this case I'm going to select five total holes. I can then specify the spacing that I want to exist between each component of the pattern and if necessary select the change direction checkbox. And now as you can see the preview of the pattern is displayed in the work area. If you want to create exact copies of the original feature in the pattern, leave the pattern geometry checkbox checked. Notice that you can specify a second direction for a path. This would essentially allow you to create an array of components in this pattern. I'm going to specify only one direction in this case, so I'm going to click OK and the component pattern is created. The feature pattern that I've created is also listed as a feature in the Design Explorer, and I can edit it from here as well. So the pattern tool allows me to create multiple instances of an existing feature along a specified direction or multiple directions. Another available tool is the Mirror tool, which will allow you to mirror an existing feature or features about a reference plane or a planar face of the model. To do this, I'll go to the Feature Main menu and then select the Mirror tool, and the Feature Mirror dialog appears. The first thing I need to do is select the feature or features that I want to mirror. So here I'll click in the Features to Mirror field and then select Hole 2 from the Design Explorer and I'll also select the pattern. So I can do that by holding the control key and then left clicking on it. Now hole 2 and pattern 3 are listed in the dialog. Next I need to specify the mirror plane, so I'll click on the mirror plane field. In this case I'll use a reference plane for the mirror. So I can left click directly on the plane in the work area and again, if I want to mirror the geometry in the exact same fashion as it was created, I want to leave the Mirror Geometry checkbox selected. Then simply click the OK button in the dialog to create the mirrored feature. So as you can see, I've now created a mirror of the existing hole feature and the pattern on the other side of the part. Both pattern and mirror features are associative. And this means that if I should change the original feature that I used to create the pattern mirror, the pattern components and the mirrored components are going to change as well. So I'm going to edit the original hole that I used. And I'm going to change the hole type from a simple hole to a counterboard hole. Then click OK to update the geometry. And as you can see, the hole is now updated. Now I can simply regenerate the other features below this point to update the entire part. So you can see that both the pattern and the mirror features now reflect the changes in the type of hole that I added to the part. Moving on, I'm going to illustrate the use of the bidirectional linear pattern. So here I've added a slot to the top face of our part here as extrusion 5. Then I'm going to pattern extrusion 5 in two directions by referencing two different edges on my model. So here I go to the feature main menu and select the pattern option again. 
we're going to stay with the linear pattern type again as well. So once again, the first thing I need to do is select the feature that I want to include in the pattern. In this case, it will only be extrusion 5. Starting off with the first direction, I'm going to click in the linear path field, and then I can select either an edge or an axis. I'm going to select an edge in this case. And remember, if the pattern gets created in the wrong direction, as it is displayed in the preview, I can select the Change Direction checkbox to reverse directions. And I will set my number of copies, remembering that this includes the original copy. Next, I need to select the Linear Path field in the second direction area. And then again, I can select either an edge or an axis. So in this case, I'm going to select another edge on the model. Next, I need to specify the number of copies in the spacing. So notice as I change the number of copies in spacing, the preview updates in the work area. Once I've defined all the applicable parameters in this dialog box, I can click OK to create the pattern once again. So as you can see, I've saved a lot of time by creating one feature and then using the pattern tool to create copies of the original feature, as opposed to modeling each feature one by one. And again, the pattern is now listed in the Design Explorer, and I can always edit that feature as necessary. You can also insert circular patterns into a model. I've already added another hole to the end of the face on the part. Now I'm going to create a circular pattern around an existing axis. I need to go to the Feature Main menu and then select the Pattern option. This time I'm going to select the Circular instead of Linear Pattern Type. So the Circular Pattern dialog box now opens. The process is exactly the same as the Linear Pattern, and I first need to specify which feature that I want to pattern. Then I need to specify the center of axis for my pattern, so I click in the center field to activate it. As usual, I can select either from the work area or the Design Explorer. I'll select the Z axis from the Design Explorer in this case. And the next step is to specify the number of copies, including my original. You can use the spinner controls or you can type in this value. And next I need to specify the angle of rotation. You can enter a simple equation here if you'd like to. So I'm going to type in 360 divided by 10. And we can see the pattern preview is now updated. Then I can click OK to create the circular pattern. So the feature is created in a very quick and efficient way. Once you use a feature in a mirror or pattern operation, you won't be able to delete that feature until you first delete the pattern or mirror. So if I right click on Extrusion 7 here, note that the delete option in the pop-up menu is now grayed out. I won't be able to delete the hole until I first delete the associated pattern. So I can right click on Pattern 8 and I'll go ahead and delete this pattern. Once the pattern has been deleted, then I can right-click on the Extrusion 7 and delete it if need be. The same dependency holds true for trying to suppress a feature as well. We'll go into suppressing features a little bit later on in the video. I'd like to talk a little bit more about the pattern geometry and mirror geometry options within the pattern and mirror tools. So I've created a new part, and I'm going to create a simple extrude boss feature using the circular sketch. I'm going to use the two geometry type of extrude boss feature. And then I'm going to select this angled face on the existing part as my target. Next I click OK to create the extrude boss feature. So I've created a cylinder from a reference plane to the angled face on an existing feature. And the next thing I need to do is to create a mirror of the new extrusion that I created. So go to the Feature Main menu and select the Mirror tool. Again, I will select this extrusion to mirror. And 
And then for the mirror plane, I'm going to use an existing reference plane, which is this plane right here. I want you to pay attention to the feature that is created when I leave the geometry checkbox turned on, as I will in this case. So now I'm going to create the mirror by clicking the OK button. You can see that the mirrored feature mirrors the exact geometry as it was created initially. So now I'll go back and edit the mirrored feature, and I'm going to turn the mirror geometry option off and then recreate the feature. So uncheck the box and click OK. Once I do so, the mirrored feature is now going to assume the same properties as the original feature versus the exact same geometry. The mirrored feature will now be created to the angled plane just as the original was. This concludes this segment of the video.